So the popular notion of a tipping point is where a, a small change makes a big difference, where, it, where a little change actually ends up altering the fate of quite a large system. And we've tried to take that popular idea and uh, apply it to climate change, to look at the regions of the world or the bits of the climate system that could exhibit a sensitivity where they reach a certain temperature and then a little bit of an extra nudge, a little bit more warming, is enough to make a big change to their future state. In some cases, when you pass a tipping point, what you're committing to is, is potentially irreversible, if you like, somewhat permanent changes. In other cases, what you're triggering is rather rapid or abrupt climate change, which is obviously harder to adapt to. And in the worst scenarios, you could be triggering a mixture of, of both, changes that are both abrupt and difficult to reverse. And the problem's made all the harder by the fact that we can't say precisely where the tipping points lie. We can at the moment just say that there are tipping points potentially in a number of systems and we can put some loose bounds on where they lie in terms of global warming. My feeling is that my generation is going to see some tipping point changes unfolding in the climate and those are the ones that are probably almost impossible to avoid now by mitigation. For further generations their fate will begin to depend a lot more on what actions we take now, certainly two or three generations hence, well, we can be talking about the difference between a world that's two degrees warmer or one that's six or more degrees warmer. In a six degree warmer world, we, we think there's the potential for at least nine different regions of the world or bits of the climate to pass a, a tipping point. Whereas if, if we manage to achieve only a two degree warmer world for future generations, then we can hope to avoid most of those tipping points.